Hi, Howard Jones here with this episode of uh, Watercolor Shorts and um, I want to show you uh, over the next um, couple of minutes as to how I develop textures um, bearing in mind of course you know this is the loose style um, and I try not to generalize uh, in terms of how things can be painted. Paint th things can be painted in many different ways but um, I'd like to show you how I approach certain textures and uh, to start off with here I'd like to show you how I create grasses so those would be the sort of wild grasses that you find in sort of meadows situations out in sort of um, farmland areas and um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set it against a backdrop of perhaps an old stone wall so that there's some tonal contrast otherwise of course you know um, there's nothing for me to um, there's nothing f for me to be able to uh, create my textures upon because, because of the need for tonal exchange the jump in tonal value so imagine this being a sort of dark grey stone wall um, perhaps it's been there for a hundred years or so um, and in front of this um, we would have our um, grasses okay so you know many years ago I probably would have um, maybe put a wash over this and then perhaps um, uh, painted my grasses with a rigger brush making individual strands um, I mean I mean there's nothing wrong with that and I still use that uh, technique for sometimes but it's not um, as is the way with watercolor it's that the, it you cannot rely on one technique only um, because you're boring you, you, your paintings will start to look a bit boring a bit flat a bit predictable after a while and you'd even get fed up of painting that way after a while so I'm going to show you um, a couple of ways um, as to how I would create uh, grasses in a textual way. So let's start off with, um, as I say, a sort of grey wash for the wall. And I'm just picking up a bit of indigo here. Now a lot of this type, this particular method, as I say, there are many ways of painting um, the same thing. Um, but this does call for uh, a wet in wet uh, technique. So I'm just picking up, as I say, indigo blue. Picked up a little bit of burnt sienna in there as well. If you're wondering what that's sort of where the olive type color is coming from, that's just a combination of indigo blue and a little bit of burnt sienna. So let's just get it really swimming in here. And I'm I'm going back into areas like this just to keep it alive and by keeping it alive of course what I mean is um, I I'm, I'm want to make sure that when I get to it um, this is all still very wet so imagine this stone wall with its capstones up here like this nice random fashion as I say this is not so much about the wall itself it's about what I'm going to put in front of it now before this all gets a chance to dry off you can imagine some brighter colors Maybe the so it says lemon yellow and burnt sienna. So we'll just hit this area with. I mean, you can either refer to that as the color of the grasses, or you could refer to this as the color of the sunlight that's on the grasses. So it's just a wash to give us that that effect. So just draw it into upwards and into the wall in places randomly like this. Now there's a couple of things that you can do. Um, a lot of it depends on the timing because, as I say, we are working wet into wet. Um, so I want to scrape into here at some point, but it's too wet to scrape. If you scrape too early when it's still wet, then you'll um, simply damage the paper and leave dark lines, which in itself is an effect if it's an effect that you desire. That's the way to do it, is to sort of, you, you bruise the paper, if you like, um, you know, you might sort of to give you an example. You sort of pull something out of the paint like this, and this is just a, a, a 
a painter's knife, um, something that you know the oil painter would use, or acrylic painter using an impasto technique. But you can scrape into that. As I say, if it's too wet, just like I have there, you can see that dark line forming. That's due to the paper being bruised because it was. I went in very early while the paper was still very wet. So it is an it is an effect in itself. Um, let me show you a couple of other things before I start scraping again a little bit in a couple of minutes time when this has gone a bit drier. Um, I, I tend to pick up a small brush, this happens to be a rigger brush, and I will tap water into this rich paint. These paint applications by the way have to be very rich. You can't be mean with the paint so it's a lot of water and a lot of paint in this mix. Um, so by tapping in with just water like this you can see that developing immediately, these sort of seed heads. Uh, you can imagine the, at the top of each strand of grass uh, there is a, a, a cluster of seed heads. Um, you can do a fair bit of this uh, on this scale. We're looking at a, a grassy area that's quite close to us, of course. It's not at distance. So you could see just how this would create a texture that would infer um, you know grass seeds that type of thing um, now on top of that you can of course pick up any mix you like I'm just picking up a bit of ultramarine uh, sorry indigo blue here with a bit of burnt sienna again so there's only three colors really I'm using here and um, so into this still wet mix you might want to pop in a couple of dark versions of those uh, seed heads that I've just been um, applying so placing them by making contact with the brush sometimes like this and sometimes just by tapping the brush like that which gives a much finer um, a finer uh, a, a delivery these little sort of um, spatters of paint smaller spatters of paint okay so so far so there's sort of three things you can do here you can scrape while the paint is still wet with a knife uh, you can drop clean water into the area off the brush like this just tapping the brush you can do the same thing with paint and you can also apply the paint um, by making contact with the with the brush tip now um, something else that we can do here we can use uh, white gouache that would be a uh, case of just taking white gouache from directly from the tube there is water in this brush before I did this and again tapping just tapping a bit of white paint into areas like this it's a great effect I mean a really lovely effect um, and the reason why I use gouache and sometimes I'll put a bit of color in that gouache as well um, say so say a bit of lemon yellow something like that and the reason why that is different and it's a, it's different to just a, tapping the water in which we did a moment ago is because whenever you use a, opaque paint which of course white is it's the most opaque of all the watercolor paints um, then you um, effectively um, the shape that you tap in the retains it doesn't spread so much as water would so the little droplets of water will are likely to give you larger uh, blemishes larger drift if you like um, but the consistency of opaque paint means that um, if you place a shape with opaque paint like this particularly as this is drying off a bit now um, then then that little shape that you make is going to stay there it's not going to drift it isn't going to bleed like the, um, the when just using water so you can already see I hope that there's a, a sense of grass and seed head here what we haven't created really is what we need to do by going back to the uh, the knife and that it's about right to do that now so there is a a wind of opportunity there's a timing issue and that's what watercolor is all about anyway you know um, it's all about paint and water consistency not only within the brush but what's already on the paper and between the brush and what's on the paper there's a further consideration um, and then the other thing of course is timing is knowing that if I want to make this mark then I have to wait for the paper and paint and water to be just at the right dampness 
um, or consistency by making these random shapes like this, sometimes quite broad shapes. You know, I, I think you've got to try and get away from thinking about making every individual strand of grass, every every blade of grass. Sometimes these these things form a mass, um, so you're seeing however many um, a, 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 a clump, a bunch of, of of grass blades together, and that will give you a shape that I'm more more like the the one I'm making now. Almost geometrical, you know. There are there are these sort of um, there, there's always I, I think that that's another thing that offers a slightly more contemporary look to your to your paintings is um, is to look for the geometrical shapes in nature the, the, it doesn't sound like the two go hand in hand but um, it does make for uh, a very contemporary effect on your paintings is to sort of scrape out something that might look more like a, a, a column rather than a, a, an organic item uh, object so there we are I hope you can sort of see that effect there so if I just zoom in for you to see things a little bit closer. Ah, oh, there we are, sorry. I, I forgot I'm not on autofocus. There, so hopefully you can see um, some of those techniques there. And then finally, of course, you can go back and you can add rather to this uh, something a little more, uh, let's call it traditional, if you like. Um, by where we do use the rigger brush and just add, embellish a little bit of darker shapes, darker, um, making the same sort of shapes that we've already made, but in this darker paint, this darker tone. And I've just used a bit of indigo and burnt sienna for that. So, and you know, at the end of the day, it's it's your painting at the end of the, of the day, how, how much of this you want to do, um, how how many or how much of those sort of seed head grassy seed heads that you want to create um, is is sometimes you know a decision you make when painting it depending on the amount of detail that you want to infer. Might just add some of these individual the odd little individual. So it's just again white gouache straight from the tube and I'm just adding a little bit of that um, that type of detail you get at the top of those grasses so I hope that's useful um, you know we'll be looking at uh, another type of texture soon in another one of these uh, watercolor shorts but in the meantime, hope you've enjoyed this one. You get something from it. You can learn something from it. And um, uh, do leave your comments. Uh, always good to hear from you. Um, I, uh, just, you know, bear in mind, I, I, I try to offer um, things that I know are reliable, uh, things that I use. They're not the only way, I hasten to add, you know, of doing um, grasses and textures um, you know there's plenty on YouTube of people doing that they're making fantastic jobs of um, similar sort of uh, examples and um, that works too but uh, you know I, my recommendation my tip I suppose is to sort of learn as much of them as you can um, have plenty of uh, plenty of this information uh, at your disposal these skills techniques at your disposal